All right. It is uh, an honor to introduce our keynote speaker this morning. Nick Calio is the President and CEO of Airlines for America, known as A4A. A4A is a trade association uh, for the American passenger and cargo airlines. A4A advocates for American Airlines as the model of safety, customer service, and environmental responsibility. Our passenger airlines and cargo airlines contribute nearly $1.5 trillion to our gross domestic product and over 11 million jobs every year. Under Nick Calio's leadership, A4A rebranded and honed its focus on being an influential voice in helping shape, shape legislative, regulatory policies, and the priority to improve air travel for everyone. Nick is known for his ability to build consensus. A4A works collaboratively with airlines, labor unions, Congress, the administration to promote the safety and security and health of the U.S. airline industry. NACA and A4A are allies on many issues, working collaboratively every day, from ending sequestration furloughs in 2013 to ending the government shutdown this year. NACA and A4A working together collaboratively brings positive results on many, many issues. Nick is one of our biggest supporters to help us find a path for stable, predictable funding for the FAA. His full bio is remarkable and very interesting, and I could be up here for an hour to talk about it, but I do uh, want to point out that it is in the app, and you should read it after you hear him speak today. From being in two White House administrations to being the v Executive Vice President of Citicorp. I'm proud to call Nick my friend and a friend of NACA. Please give a warm welcome to Nick Calio. Thanks, Paul. I am truly honored to be here today with the men and women who man the front lines of aviation in the United States. I'm particularly pleased to be here at a conference that is focused on communicating for safety. That theme couldn't be more fitting for both NACA and A4A. Both of our groups are rooted in ensuring the safety of our aviation system. From JFK to LAX, Charleston to Chicago, Washington to Des Moines, Dallas to Los Angeles, you're truly communicating for safety every single day. In airport control towers, terminal radar approach control facilities, and air traffic control centers. Most travelers don't see your work, and most probably take it for granted. But without you, something we all know, we do not fly without you. There is no more graphic reminder of this than the remembrances of September 11, 2001 that occurred last week. That's a day that none of us who are old enough will ever forget. That day, I was one of the White House staffers who was underground with Vice President Cheney and the so-called PIOC, the Presidential Emergency Operations Control Center which allows the president, it's in a bunker underneath the north lawn of the White House. That used to be a secret, it is no longer. But it allows the president to operate in times of crisis and in safety. It's where he gets evacuated to if there's a threat. When I got down to the PIOC that day, then Secretary of Transportation Norm Mineta was sitting on a chair with two landline phones, one in each hand, and there were two small television screens. On that screen, all you could see were airplane symbols. You couldn't see the background of the TV at all. And he was busy calling down the planes, working with you all. Within a couple of hours, all those planes were down. It was remarkable. At that time, I had no idea that there were ever that many planes in the air at one time. But I think it talks about your job. I also watched last week a National Geographic show called Voices of 9-11. I don't know if you saw it. If you haven't, I would recommend you look it up because it features the voices real voice recordings of air traffic controllers that day who were going about their business as the crisis unfolded calmly with assurance and competence. It was absolutely chilling, to be honest, but it was also impressive and absolutely, absolutely emblematic of the work that you do every single day for this country. Your responsibilities are immense. Over 140 million operations within the national airspace system every year with over one billion passengers. Your success is because of the dedicated workforce you have at airports, 
large and small in every single state and territory in this country, where every day is training day. Your success is also because of NACA's strong leadership. NACA is fortunate to have Paul Rinaldi representing you in the nation's capital. And I'm not just saying that because he's Italian and because, like me, he exercises his First Amendment rights with his hands. <laughs> Seriously, Paul knows the issues. He understands how to get things done. Those aren't just words. They are incredibly important in Washington these days with the instability that we have right now and that we've had for a number of years. He's a devoted air traffic controller, a passionate advocate for your interests, and I'm happy to say he is my trusted friend. We do a lot together. We manage to have some fun along the way, but we get a lot of work done together, as do our teams. I also want to recognize Trish Gilbert. She's a powerful voice for NATCA and the industry. As I think many of you know, uh, last year she was awarded the American Association of Airport Executives Woman in Aviation Award. It's a very prestigious award reserved for the most important woman, most um, influential woman in our industry. So Trish, congratulations. That was much, uh, much deserved. <laughs> Paul and Trish are a great partnership on your behalf and work with a very strong team of advocates in Washington who, as Paul mentioned, work literally almost daily with our team at A4A because of the issues that we have that are, are in our mutual interest. NAC also is blessed with a strong team across the country, all of you and your committees, uh, as you work every day uh, to provide the important service that you provide, you're also a major political force, uh, which I'm sure you recognize. Together, we all want to ensure that air travel remains the safest mode of transportation on Earth. Our safety record is part of why it's a good time to fly. But don't take it from me. You know, I'm supposed to say that, but it's true, and we've got a lot of statistics to back it up, most of which I'll spare you. But earlier this year, J.D. Power asked, in quotes, is this the golden age of air travel? That was the first line in a press release announcing the findings of the 2019 North America Airline Satisfaction Study, which found that the combination of newer planes, better ticket value, and better customer touch points has driven overall satisfaction with flying to an all-time high. Michael Taylor, who's the Senior Director of Travel and Hospitality Intelligence at J.D. Power said, this is probably the best time in modern history in which to fly. Travelers agree that it's a great time to fly. Look at the summer months. Over 2.8 million passengers every single day, 257 million passengers just over the summer months. This record travel is in large part due to two main factors, affordability and accessibility. Airfares are at a historic low. People in this country are able to fly, and they do. 40% of Americans who fly every year have family incomes under $50,000. 58% have family incomes under $78,000. 78, when I was growing up in Cleveland, Ohio, I got to tell you, nobody in my neighborhood ever got on an airplane. The closest we got was going out to the airport to look at the planes take off and land. The reason was pretty simple. Nobody could afford it at that time. If we took a vacation, you packed up a bunch of bologna sandwiches and a cooler that you got stuck in between you and your brother and sisters and got in the car and went somewhere. And my brother got car sick, by the way. It was terrible. Uh, anyway, I got on an airplane the first time when I was 17 years old. My grandson, who turns six tomorrow, and my other two grandchildren, who are three and one, have flown over a dozen times apiece already. I think that is also emblematic of the change. Over 90% of Americans have flown at least one time in their lifetime, and almost all of us rely on overnight shipping to receive food, clothing, electronics, documents, flowers, you name it. We can get it from any corner of this country or any corner of the world, and it just comes to our doorstep. You should come and see my doorstep on any given day with the Amazon box. It's fairly impressive. So yes, times have changed. Uh, and sometimes all of this change comes with challenges. The two overseas accidents involving the 737 MAX planes are still being investigated. At the same time, the FAA is working closely with pilots unions, technical experts, international regulators, and Boeing to analyze and test the updated flight control system. Uh, it is in some ways an unenviable job. 
and I'll get to that in a minute. We were asked to testify this summer on Capitol Hill, and we told Congress that safety is not something that anyone in our industry takes for granted, and we never will. That's why the industry works so closely and collaboratively with the FAA and all the great employees there. We work in partnership. It's a different system. You know, we tell on ourselves if there's something wrong. Uh, we work with them to fix problems. Uh, and it's more of a partnership um, as we are still, as they still are our regulator. We continue to believe that the FAA's safety and regulatory framework is the gold standard in the world. Some are trying to question that in some corners. We don't believe it. There is no compromise on safety ever in our system. The three U.S. carriers who were operating the MAX have been able to accommodate most of their passengers. That said, we are looking forward to getting the MAX back in the air. And I'll just put it out there. I am concerned that in some places um, this has become as much about politics as it has about safety, which again I think makes the FAA's job even harder. Another challenge facing the industry is the instability in Washington that I referenced earlier. We all watched this play out through the partial government shutdown nine months ago. Interestingly enough, like previous furloughs in 2011 and 2013, air traffic control became the face of this shutdown. It became the lever that stopped the shutdown. Uh, most of you can probably remember where you were when the news started to break and change. I remember the banner on CNN read, delays at LaGuardia, Newark, and Philadelphia, airports due to air traffic control staffing um, shortages amid the shutdown. The system had reached its breaking point, which we had been talking about for days. Paul and Trisha hit the airwaves for hours on end, trying to point out what was going on. We did the same. Um, but it was finally when people were not able to get on airplanes that Congress started to pay attention. When Trish and Paul were on TV, their message was clear. Controllers want to work. Controllers care about their jobs. They are coming to their jobs every day. They're dedicated to the safety of aviation. But they deserve to be paid for the job they do. It's a pretty simple thing. You should be paid for what you do, and you shouldn't be going home without paychecks and having to live hand to fist. You're vital to our system, and that's exactly why A4A and our carrier members are standing with NATCA in supporting the Aviation Funding Stability Act of 2019, which Transportation and Infrastructure Chairman Peter DeFazio introduced. As you know, the bill would authorize the FAA to draw down from the Airport and Airway Trust Fund, which our industry funds, in the event of a future government shutdown. In essence, the bill would ensure that the programs, projects, and activities can continue uninterrupted. You know, a lot of people think that these projects stop. The hiring of air traffic controllers stops. Uh, you know, some project that Terry Bristol manages stops, and then 45 days later, it just picks up where it left off. That's not the case. The cumulative delays that are caused by these government shutdowns are significant and long-lasting, and they really do have to stop. Your team at Your team in Washington has done an incredible job of educating members of Congress about this bill. It has over, in the House, it has over 250 co-sponsors. That's impressive, but I'm going to tell you there are powerful forces that don't want a bill like that to pass because they don't want their hands off the purse strings um, and to give in to the year-to-year -year funding. Um, that's unfortunate. We're all working against it because we think that given the way the trust fund is funded and the impact on the economy and aviation, that we are different and we are separate. So we're going to continue to work on it. That plays into another issue on which NATCA and A4A stood together, fundamental air traffic control reform. I know that not every controller across your large organization agreed with the stand that your leadership took, but it was a stand that was taken in your interest. It wasn't about corporatization or privatization. The whole point about this legislation was to ensure stable and continuous funding that was not subject to politics and the whims of politics with the constant shutdowns. It was also about finding a path to provide you and our system the best, most modern tools and infrastructure to do your jobs and our jobs. Politically, it was too big a concept. 
And now politically, it's off the table, which we all recognize. But we, the airlines, you the controllers, the pilots, the flight attendants, and our partners at the FAA need to find a path that will allow the air traffic controller system to innovate, modernize, and provide benefits more quickly. NATCA and A4A are going to team up again on the Hill next week. Senator Ted Cruz, who's chairman of the Aviation Subcommittee, the Senate Commerce Committee, has asked us to testify at a hearing about the current state of the air traffic control system. It's an opportunity for our groups to impress upon senators that they need to stick to this issue and oversee it and provide the oversight necessary because now, 20 years into next gen, we need to kick it into high gear. A4A is going to testify that we're committed to fact-based solutions that will improve our system. We will stress the importance of utilizing technology and best practices and deliver the safest and most efficient air traffic infrastructure in partnership with you and the FAA and the pilots. And we will explain how next-gen programs will increase safety, efficiency, capacity, predictability, and resiliency for U.S. aviation. You know, there's nothing easy about getting any of this done. We all know that, particularly look at performance-based navigation as an example, and you get the noise factor involved in communities, and everybody would like to see quieter, more efficient use of airplanes, more airplanes, closer separation, but they don't want the plane flying over that house. It's a huge problem. So it is our hope that the FAA, under the leadership of Administrator Steve Dixon, will advance next-gen implementation and do it sooner rather than later. We believe that the FAA is in good hands. Uh, the administrator knows operations. He knows the, um, he knows the FAA. Uh, he knows all the private sector organizations, and he knows the international organizations. So with the team at the FAA, we have really high hopes right now. The joint efforts of A4A and NAT have been key to previous legislative victories. During the last session of Congress, we collaborated very closely on the five-year reauthorization bill, and we're pleased when it was signed into law. The reauthorization is essential for the FAA and the entire industry to have a degree of certainty, especially in these uncertain times. Uh, yesterday, that appropriations process I was vaguely referencing before blew up again. So we all have our fingers crossed. Um, but the, at the reauthorization bill, ensures that the FAA can advance projects and implement programs that strengthen our country's status as the safe mo safest, most efficient system in the world. It provides stability for passengers as well as for anyone who relies on cargo shipments. And it offers some certainty for employers, manufacturers, and communities to continue hiring, innovating, and investing. All of us can agree it was a great success. It will benefit all aspects of the U.S. aviation industry, now we just have to be sure that the House and Senate come together on the funding for the two-year budget agreement that they previously agreed to this year. And I'm smiling, I see Paul smiling, I see Terry smiling, Trish smiling. It should not be this hard. Anyway, our logo at Airlines for America says, Airlines for America, we connect the world. NACA's motto is, we guide you home. Four simple words without any simple meaning and without any indication of the difficulty and the mechanics of what goes into what you do every day. It's a reminder that the work that you do is critical to this nation. We connect the world, but you guide us home every single day. You get planes off the ground and into the sky safely. Every day you guide planes back to airports safely. You guide flights home every single day in this country and you do it with grace and you take pride in what you do, and it shows. You train every day. All of us at A4A and our members are grateful for the work that you do. We are grateful for your partnership in the skies. We're grateful for your partnership in Washington. I thank you again for letting me come here today. Oh, sure. Well done, sir. I'm sure we have a photographer. I think we have one. Yeah, good job. Oh. I don't know. I think they decided that day two. No we're pictures. Done. Yeah. No. <laughs> He's on a union break. <laughs>